Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we continue our Advent journey today, we take a moment to call to mind God's presence with us and open ourselves to the love and mercy that he continues to shower upon us. Lord Jesus, you were sent so that none of us would perish. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to prepare for the coming of the day of the Lord. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you baptize us with the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out. In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God, here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation.
A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be. Good morning. Well, those opening words uh, that we get this morning from the prophet Isaiah, probably, uh, you know, we hear that comfort, give comfort to my people. Um, It's a prayer I think we might find ourselves uttering now with all that's going on in our world amidst the continuing threat of the pandemic, uh, um, the tensions in our country, amidst any personal turmoil or difficulties that we might be experiencing. And something along the lines of our prayer might sound like, Lord, give comfort, give recovery, give relief, give healing, give peace, give calm, however it is that we might articulate that prayer. But those opening words from Isaiah, I think, are worth listening to because they are really a promise from God that's spoken to a people, uh, if you go back in history, spoken to a people who were struggling. They were broken because of their experience of being forced out of their homeland into a difficult life of slavery. And they were now preparing, as we hear this passage, to go back to that land that had been occupied by enemies and largely destroyed by them. Those people felt a whole lot of uncertainty and fear about the future, but also about the present that they were experiencing. And I would imagine we feel some of those similar fears 
So it's good for us to hear those words of God spoken to us again today, as these readings reiterate God's promise and his power to restore. We hear about his power to destroy evil and bring about good, to bring about peace from conflict, healing from sickness and brokenness, love from hate, calm from chaos, ultimately life from death. It's always the promise we get from our God. And as, we, as, the, as was the experience of the people of Israel, to whom God spoke through Isaiah in that first reading, as was the experience of those who listened to John the Baptist, we share their desire, their hope for a better day. And we get to hear the promise that it's coming during these Advent days. John the Baptist, of course, urges us to prepare for that day. This promise, this hope, this preparation is really, if you get it, or it, it's at the heart of what Advent is all about. The season of Advent uh, expresses the truth that we live in this kind of in-between time, uh, between when Jesus was here on earth and, and that time when he will come again to make all things complete. Our job is to carry on that mission in between. That's the role of the church. And each of us has a role as a member of the church to make that happen. So it's doubly important that we're here, that we're here together to be fed by Jesus' body and blood even now, to come together in prayer and to support one another in prayer and to recommit ourselves to doing the work of Jesus as best we can. And as we think and pray about how to do that and how to prepare ourselves to do this work to carry on Jesus' mission, thankfully we get some good advice today in the readings from Isaiah, from St. Peter, and from St. John the Baptist. They, They call us to embrace goodness and holiness, things of that sort, and steer away from anything that's not. They call us to, and I love that image, to make straight the way of the Lord, to to straighten out any crooked paths, to lower mountains, to fill in valleys, anything that could get in the way of our relationship with God or our relationship with each other, to smooth that road so that it's easy for us to know of God's presence. It's easy for God to be with us, and it's easy for us to reach out and, and, and relate with one another. We get advice to, to try to be more forgiving of those who hurt us, to strive to be compassionate and caring to those who need support, to practice kindness and patience, to choose love over hate, peaceful words rather than those that cause hurt or conflict. And John the Baptist, I think, gives us that sort of that piece of ultimate advice that should be on the, um, kind of on the minds and hearts of everybody, and that is all John did was point to the Savior, pointed away from himself to Jesus, so that people would pay attention. That's our role as well. And we know that our world is in desperate need of this. And closer to home, we know that our neighbors, our parents, our siblings, our children, our friends, our coworkers are also in need of this as we deal with all kinds of issues that pose challenges to us in our lives. So as we think about it, as we pray about it, hopefully, the love, the compassion, the forgiveness, the care that we choose to bring to any moment can and will communicate clearly and bring flesh to God's love here and now. We have a chance to make the Advent promise real and fulfilled to somebody else as they experience the power of Jesus' words as we speak and also through the things that we do. So we get a great opportunity today to experience this blessing of how God is active in our lives even now as we receive him here in the Eucharist. But we also get a a challenge, and that is to take this forth as we leave from here, to bring this blessing to people in our lives, to carry on Jesus' work, and to bring the power of his love to all that we encounter. So let's open ourselves today to the grace of this Lord who comes to us, who advents into our lives, and ask him to give us what we need 
to be the people that he calls us to be. I invite you to stand. Together as a family of faith, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us offer our petitions to our loving God. For healing of our civic community, that God will lead us to greater respect for one another and a deeper commitment to the truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are alone are in isolation, that God will sustain them and help us to reach out and accompany them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Louis Gregory Boland, son of Sam and Alex Boland, who will be baptized at our parish this weekend, that he and all children grow in their relationship with Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that God will ease their pain and bring them healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Jim Lowe's, Marcella Elbert, and Eleanor Hellebush, the mother of Neil Hellebush, that the Good Shepherd will gather them into the peace and joy of God's presence forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause now to offer to God our own needs and petitions. And we pray especially for Jeffrey and which Richard Westholter, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we come before you with thanks and in faith. We ask you now to hear us as we pray. Listen to the prayers we've spoken and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. In your compassion and mercy, answer us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We have uh, two Eucharistic ministers, please. For those of us who cannot receive the Eucharist, let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you never permit to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements today. The the Christmas outreach continues. Um, We ask that you return uh, uh, the ornaments with the unwrapped gifts by next Sunday before the 11 o'clock Mass. Uh, And again, if you'd like to make a monetary donation towards the Christmas outreach program, you can drop that in the collection basket, uh, drop it by the parish office, send it in, uh, whatever. There are more details in the bulletin about this. Um, Tonight, tonight again, we will host, uh, Father Tony and I will host a little evening prayer and an open forum on Facebook Live. Um, That was a lot of fun last week, and we had to work out a few technical glitches, um, but we think we got those figured out. So that's tonight, 5.30 on the Parish Facebook page. And you can get to that right from the website. Uh, Tuesday, December 8th, is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Under normal circumstances, it would be a holy day of obligation. We are in anything but normal, right? So that continues. This is not a holy day of obligation this year. We will have Mass at 7 a.m. as always and at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday. A Christmas card uh, fundraiser to benefit our grade school. Um, uh, Jim Peters has designed a very nice uh, Christmas card uh, of the nativity window. And um, it's, it's actually very beautiful. So those are being sold through the parish office and the school office. If you're in need of Christmas cards, like I was, uh, it comes in pretty handy. Um, they are available if you just call and, and come by and pick them up. Our Christmas Masses this year, um, we've set the schedule. So the, on Christmas Eve, Mass will be at, um, we'll have a, uh, one more Mass than usual. So we'll start at 3 p.m., then 5 p.m., 7 p.m., and 10 p.m. That's Christmas Eve. On Christmas Day, 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. We are asking that you sign up, if you can, uh, for one of those Masses. It, hear me clearly on this. It is not to reserve seats, all right? And I don't want to deal with that Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Uh, but it is to give us a number so that we can plan accordingly for ministers and, and that sort of thing, all right? So there's a, if you want to do that online, you can. There's a sign-up sheet out in Jesuit Hall in the, uh, the vestibule there where you can sign up for, for a Mass, just to give us an idea for planning purposes. Our RCIA program is going to begin uh, shortly after the first of the year, so if, if you or someone you know uh, might be interested in learning more about the faith or becoming a member of our Catholic faith, uh, we ask that you uh, feel free to contact myself, uh, Father Tony, Deacon Dave, and, and we will help you and give you some of the details. But we'll start that after the first of the year um, to get that rolling for, for uh, Easter. Um, as you heard in the petitions, please remember uh, the, the following individuals who have died and their families. So Eleanor Hellebush, who's the mother of Neil Hellebush, from Marcella Albert, and Jim Lowe's, uh, who died this past week. So thanks for your, for your presence here this morning, as always. And I... Hope you have a great day and a great week ahead. The Lord be with you. May God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go in peace, preparing yourselves for the coming of our Lord Jesus. Thanks.